It's Friday night, Atlanta. Time to rise up tonight with Kelly Price and Harry Douglas. Presented by AT&T. Oh, can you feel it, Atlanta? We are still alive. It is that still alive mentality. I'm Kelly Price, joined as always by former Falcons wide receiver Harry Douglas. As of today, December 17th, the Falcons are still in this thing. Kelly, how time moves and how time moves fastly. The last three years, the Falcons haven't been in this situation mm -mm. in a very, very long time. So what a time to be alive in a precious time at that. Absolutely. Big part of that is what this Falcons defense did this past weekend. Michael Walker said they took that last game against Carolina personally. And man, did they extract some revenge in Charlotte on Sunday. Thinking back over the last couple weeks, the Falcons have allowed more than 21 points just once since the Dallas game to that prolific Buccaneers offense. This defense now has back to back games with pick sixes. They've notched interceptions in four straight games. And after forcing eight turnovers in the first 10 games of the season, they now have seven in their last four, Harry. And Kelly, I think that the, you look at the Carolina game, right? They got three turnovers. So that's three extra possessions you got your offense. And this this defense has been thriving on that of late. You love to see it, but I got, I'm going to continue to give credit to Dean Pease. Now we see why he was so good with the Patriots, the Ravens, the, the Tennessee Titans. And he has brought that greatness right here in Atlanta. And these players love him. They love his scheme. They're finally, uh, they're finally getting acclimated to it. And you see the fruits of the labor being out there on Sundays every weekend. Absolutely. Definitely getting more comfortable. And when the defense is forcing turnovers, in short fields, getting stops. The offense's job is much easier as well, right? I think we're starting to see this kind of football that Arthur Smith has been wanting to get out of this team, but that's especially true on offense as the Falcons are getting more and more balance on that side of the ball. Balance is key. You don't want to be one dimensional. Um, it's good to get Hayden Hurst back. I got to give credit to Russell Gage. He's been stepping up a lot in that number one wide receiver role, but I must give credit to Jake Matthews and Jalen Mayfield on that left side of that offensive line. Those guys have been opening up holes for, for Mike Davis and Cordell Patterson to be able to run through and that's one of the reasons why this run game has been so good of late as well. Yeah. When Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot came in here this offseason, they refused to call this a rebuild. Many shook their heads at that thought, but look at where this team is now. Despite a roster that some might have dismissed as a rebuilding team, the Falcons are growing and competing when, it's, when it matters most uh, down the stretch here. And I think it's pretty manageable if you look at this final stretch. Just got to keep progressing right now. Right? Yeah, and everybody outside of the organization said that it was a rebuild. Everybody except two people, Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot. They knew what this team could be, and do they have the greatest of athletes and players on their roster right now as, as other teams? No, they don't, but they're making the best and getting the best out of their players. They continue. They want these guys to continue to progress week in and week out, and if they continue to do that, Kelly, they're going to be in a position to have a playoff spot when, when, when it's all said and done. Absolutely, and let's take a look at the NFC playoff picture as it stands heading into week 15 on Sunday. Obviously, the Falcons travel to San Francisco this weekend. That has huge playoff implications in the NFC with the 7-6 and six Niners currently holding a wild card spot. If the Falcons win this week, Weekend, they'd have a huge tiebreaker over them. If they lose, well, Atlanta wouldn't be mathematically eliminated per se, but it'd pretty much be over with all these other six and seven squads on the outside looking in. So you're telling me there's a chance, Harry? There's always a chance. <laughs> there is hope. And I love the simple fact that you have five teams that are six and seven. Right yeah. now, the San Francisco 49ers, they're seven and six. If you beat them, now you move a step closer. And that's what you want to do. In December, there's meaningful, meaningful games on the West Coast, out in the Bay against San Francisco. I love to see it, Kelly. You love to see it. Well, this week the Falcons talked about adopting that playoff mentality the rest of the season, and they're certainly not leaving anything out there on the fashion front. Let's take out, take a look at some of the Falcons fits from Sunday. First up, the punter Thomas Morstead with the throwback windbreaker. I love this look. Matching it with some red and black Jays. I know you love that. Look at the drip. Look at the drip. See, this man just came on the team not too long ago, and he understood the assignment. Yes. The assignment was to look good for game day. Thomas, Thomas, I like it, man. That's a great look. I like it, Thomas. Next up, Kendall Sheffield cleaning up nice. I love the windowpane brown suit. Simple business look with some black uh, ties and dress shoes there. He's even got a little fancy little boutonniere going on on the top there, Harry. Hey, Kendall Sheffield on line one. I need a lawyer, my man. You're looking <laughs> sharp. I need a lawyer, Sheffield. Kendall Sheffield on line one. I need a lawyer. He looks the part. Next up, a simple and casual look from Kyle Pitts. It may be freezing outside, but he's got a tropical state of mind with some uh, 
pineapple kind of pullover pattern there. He's missing his favorite accessory, which is the sunglasses we know he's come to love on Rise Up Tonight. That boy must be hungry. He like fruit. I guess he's a <laughs> unicorn for a reason. When you're the unicorn, you can wear pineapples, you can wear grapes, you can wear watermelons, <laughs> anything you want to wear on your shirt or your clothes, you can wear. Go ahead, unicorn. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, the king of Falcons fits Grady Jarrett rocking mm, mm, a mm. sharp tan suit with mm, those spiky mm, white mm. sneakers with the red bombs that I know you have and we both love. Just another day in the office for Grady with this clean, clean look right here. Boy, and he got the umbrella. Okay, King Grady. Okay, <laughs> King Grady. Great. Listen, he's one person that we can count on every, every week, week to be so dapper, reliable. dressed sharp. Give us a show, Falcons Fit. We make this show for people like Grady. Thank you, Grady, for giving us content. Reliable on and off the field. We love it. Well, Christmas time is one of my favorite times of the year because I just love shopping, picking out gifts, and buying gifts for people. But it's also about getting gifts, right? This week we asked the Falcons, what's the best Christmas gift you ever got? The best Christmas gift I ever got was the Wii because I had a lot of siblings and that Wii was like anything, you had to settle everything get out the Wii. So I think that was the best gift I got. Probably, I, I, I got the GameCube back when it was like a thing and that was probably the best Christmas gift I got, yeah. Seven years old, um, my mom bought me and my brother a scooter. It literally lasted 30 minutes. It was that bad and we destroyed it. <laughs> First time we got it, we was riding and went down a hill. In the store. <laughs> I think all of our ankles have been destroyed at some point by one of those Razor scooters. Those were really hard back in the day. My favorite Christmas gift I ever got was my puppy when I was a little kid. Aww. His name was Bubba. He was a you know, yellow lab. He was great. I would love another puppy, you know, if my husband's watching out there, you know, another puppy would be great. What Pressure's on, Mike. <laughs> what about you? What's your best Christmas gift? I'll say for me, last year, my wife got me a MacBook. Um, also, Ooh. she got me a lot of studio lights and stuff that's in my office. So she understood that I love to work and I work hard. So she got me a lot of things to make my work that much easier and better. So shout that. out to you, baby. Thoughtful gift for someone who likes to work and you got to get those things that, that help that work. That's right. Well, we've got a great show remaining here on Rise Up tonight, including a great conversation about improving the city of Atlanta with the crew behind Atlanta Influences Everything. Don't miss that later in the show. Plus, I break down Russell Gage and his route running. That's next in my film room on Rise Up to Net. We got you covered with more Falcons news and nuggets, including a trip over to Harry's film room. Rise Up Tonight will be right back. What's up, ATL? This is Head Crack. Let's rejoin my favorite co host Kelly and Harry, for more Rise Up Tonight on your home for Falcons football. Fox 5 Atlanta. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight for this week's edition of Harry's Film Room. Now, recently, I've been really impressed with wide receiver Russell Gage and the way he stepped up for his team offensively. With the Falcons' number one wide receiver, Calvin really taking time away for mental health reasons, there was a big void that needed to be filled. Well, Russell Gage has filled that void. Let's take a look at his route running versus the Carolina Panthers last week. Right here, the Falcons' offense, they have second and 11 right now on the 24-yard line. You see Russell Gage right here. He's one-on-one -on -one with this corner. Now, the route he's going to run is a slant and go, right? We call it a sluggo. So he's going to go here, he's going to come here, and then he's going to take this route deep. But as we let this play play, I'm going to show y'all some key details and why it worked. As we stop it right here, the first step in running this route is to make this corner believe that you're running a slant. This is a great job by Russell Gage with his head looking at Matt Ryan to show that he's running a slant. It was also a great job by Matt Ryan giving the shoulder fake to make the defender think he's throwing the slant. So as we let it play out, boom, got, got him to bite. But as we stop it right here, the second part of this slant and go is that the ball's not coming to you right now, right? So there's no reason to look for it. Russell Gates puts his head down and he's running. As we let it finish playing, as he's dig, 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 now he looks in the sky for the Christmas present. Heck of a catch by Russell Gage. Now I want y'all to see something from the back end of this as well. You're gonna see Matt Ryan, watch Matt Ryan give this shoulder fake. Boom, that makes the defender bite right there. Russell Gage, boom, sell it with his head, go back out, dig, dig, head down, look in the sky, ball's right there. Kelly, back to you. Those are the details we need. 
Good stuff, Harry. Thanks. Well, if you've been watching our show long enough, you know we're just as quick as anyone to point out that the Falcons are a work in progress. And if you've been watching the Falcons each Sunday, you know that progress is happening each week as this team gets to where it wants to be. Falcons insider Tori McElhaney breaks down how to keep building on that success in her keys to the game this week. The Falcons have yet to play a complete game. They've had moments, they've had halves, they've had quarters, but they really haven't put it all together. But Arthur Smith says it's not as elusive of a concept as you may think. When it comes to Sunday's game against the 49ers, the Falcons have to play as complete a game as they have up to this point. That means all three phases of the game, offense, defense, special teams, firing on all cylinders. And this isn't some fantastical idea. And yes, that's the word that Arthur Smith used. It's something the Falcons feel is in reach. They're playing smarter football these days. They're running the ball better, having surpassed the 100 rushing yard mark three games in a row. They're much better on third down too. All of these things are steps in the right direction, but the question now lies in consistency. I feel the need to say there's a difference between the word perfection and completion. The Falcons don't have to play a perfect game, but they do need to play a complete one this Sunday against the 49ers. For Rise Up Tonight, I'm Tori McElhaney. I like that, completion versus perfection. Still to come on Rise Up Tonight, some local students got their smile on at a free dental clinic at Mercedes-Benz Stadium this week. More on that coming up later in the show. And coming up next, we're going to nest with the brains behind Atlanta influences everything. Don't miss that. That's next on Rise Up Tonight. Rise Up Tonight is presented by AT&T and brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Home Depot, how doers get more done. By Mercedes-Benz, the best of nothing. And by Truist, committed to a better future. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight, and it's time to hop into the nest with Kelly, Harry, and tonight's influencer, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. We've got with us in the nest today, the group behind the creative agency, Atlanta Influences Everything. What kind of went into creating this brand for you guys, and why was it important for you guys to do so? We felt like Atlanta lacked a consistent voice. Um, if you go to other cities like New York or LA, like there's so much pride and being from those cities. And we just, we all knew that Atlanta was such an amazing city uh, full of just creatives and just dope business. And, you know, just a lot of just dope things going on. We just felt like Atlanta should have more pride. And we, and then, and, you know, we all realized that Atlanta does influence everything. Why not just say it and let the world know? So we put it out there. Well, I, I like that. So. Two of you guys can answer this question. Why do y'all think Atlanta actually does influences everything? With me, it starts with, so to give you the blunt answer, I believe that black people dictate cool and trends. And with Atlanta being such a black Mecca, we dictate a lot of cool stuff and cool, and cool culture um, infiltrates every aspect of American culture, which infiltrates world culture. So if we're dictating the cool and dictating the trends, then ultimately we're dictating what goes on in America and, we, and we're dictating what goes on in the world. Tangible example uh, with football, I guess would be 2015 season, I think, uh, when Cam Newton, who's not of the Falcons, but he's of Atlanta, uh, when he was doing the dab, everybody, everybody's dabbing. And, uh, you know, as you got the backstory, you, you, you know, the Migos kind of came up with that. But how did the dab end up in football in Cam's hands? And just from my understanding, a quick story was earlier that year, the Carolina Panthers had one of the earliest bye games, I mean, bye weeks uh, in that season. Cam came home, his brother was playing quarterback at Grady High School at the time. Cam went to a game, the brother scored, started doing the dab, they go out to eat as a family later. Cam asked his brother, hey, what's that? Brother's like, yo, this is what everybody's doing. You know, when we score, we do this. And then the next week, they're back playing. He does it, and it goes. And there are a myriad of examples like that, but that's one that I want to throw in with the football world. And we all remember that year 
And it just made it beyond football, obviously. So yeah, that's that's one example. And that kind of leads into something I wanted to ask about. How do the Falcons and kind of sports and culture really intersect in Atlanta? Uh, I know the Falcons share the dome uh, with a football team. Uh, and, and I have to remind people that the pigskin and the success of the pigskin in this market laid the groundwork for the other pronunciation of football to come here. And it's the fan base. It is it is the South. It is what is what we do. We know football. We know Friday Night Lights. And the fan base, more specifically in my mind, the Saints and Falcons game, um, if, if the NFL talks about, you know, Dallas versus Kansas City or some of these old school <clears throat> robberies, there's a robbery in the terms of the Saints and Falcons game that has so much culture and family tied into the game that I think that's something very unique to our team and to our region that should be told more. And I know there's like we're enemies, but there's like the cousin that you love to hate. And I think that's something very (laughs) unique about our particular brand of football. Um, you know, that that you won't find in other markets. So so what are some initiatives you guys are doing in the community to really connect uh, the civic and creative scenes in Atlanta? We did what was called a community give back every day, every, what was that, Thursday? It was every Thursday we would go into underserved communities and provide them with uh, fresh produce. We partnered with a friend of ours named Howard Kepka, rest in peace. He just passed away of COVID. Uh, maybe two months ago, but from May to May, every week we were out with pallets of food and a truck sponsored by another Atlanta team, the Atlanta Braves. They uh, partnered with us and provided us with a truck and space to store food. That's really good stuff. Thank you guys for joining us in the nest. This is some really important information, and um, I think it's important that everyone watches the full interview, which we'll have on fox5atlanta.com. So make sure to check that out, and we'll be right back on Rise Up tonight. Hey Atlanta, this is Head Crack talking, and you're watching Rise Up Tonight, presented by AT&T. Head Crack here. Rise Up Tonight has been presented to you by AT&T. Mercedes-Benz Stadium is typically home to thousands of eager Dirty Bird fans cheering on their hometown Falcons. This week, though, the stadium looked a little different. Here's why, as we rise up for Atlanta, brought to you by Truist. Gone were the football players and coaches in their place, dentists and patients. The Atlanta Falcons and Team Smile partnered Tuesday to host a free oral health care program for the underprivileged, underprivileged children, giving kids a true dental experience in an NFL stadium. Children received teeth cleaning, x-rays, and more amongst the concessions of Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Team Smile wanted to ease that tension of visiting a dentist, surrounding them with a game day-like experience with cheerleaders, mascot, and even a DJ. The organization hopes these experiences will help children ditch the not-so-fun notions that sometimes come with visiting the doctor. We use sports as a tool to make things cool, to make things exciting. But really what we're doing is we're taking the fear out of dentistry. We're making it fun. We're serving children that really come from nothing. And so we're trying to provide this experience so that they're not scared of the dentist any longer. It's a huge game this weekend with playoff implications for the Falcons. They head to San Francisco, Harry. Arthur Smith said Sunday's win against the Panthers was the kind of physical game he really wants to see from his team moving forward. And now this week they meet a very physical Niners team. What are you going to be watching there Sunday afternoon? Well, that physicality, and it has to be done on the Falcons' offensive line, their defensive line, basically their whole team, both sides of the ball, and even on special teams. Uh, George Kittle, a guy for the San Francisco 49ers, in 2019 he had over 130 yards. The last two games this year that he's played in over 330 yards so wow. they have to figure out a way to stop him Debo Samuels another guy they use him in a run game a lot he can do it in the past game as well but winning the line of scrimmage for this Falcons offensive line and this defensive line is going to be very very imperative in this matchup to see who's going to move up another notch in the playoff race Debo coming. Samuel very similar to the Cordero Patterson for yes. them for Falcons fans who need a reference well thank you guys for staying up late with us here on Rise Up tonight for Harry Douglas I'm Kelly Price we'll see you back here next Friday night